Hello and welcome to another exciting breakfast with Unity. Today we're going to be... I'm your host Max Moreau and this morning what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at high dynamic range and tone mapping and how to create uh, transitional effects between areas with bright light and areas with soft lighting. So, um, so first off we're just going to create a new scene. And I had already done that, but I'm just going to do it again so, so you know we're starting from scratch here. And uh, we're going to set up a scene that has a bright area and a dark area. And uh, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to do this with cubes. I'm just going to create uh, a couple big old cubes. Why is that not muted? Let's turn off that. Alright. So uh, we're going to make a couple big cubes. Um... And I'm going to duplicate it and move. So we're going to have one this at. Uh, why are these and not at just zeros? Zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. And this one we're going to actually put, let's put five feet up, five meters up or whatever. Let's see. And I'm just going to throw a character controller in here so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to put him at. Zero, zero, zero for right now. And uh, let's raise him a little bit, just like enough so that he'll stand. Hit play and look at our weird world here. Okay, so this looks like this will work. Why does it seem like there's lighting on here? Did I apply this or something? No, I didn't. Okay, weird. This already looks kind of cool. All right, so. Um, what we're going to need next is, I'm basically going to create a hallway that uh, ends here. This is not going to be very fancy in the art department, as you, as per usual on the show. Um, actually, let's not do that. Let's just create another small cube so that we have something small to work with. And we're going to create this one. It's going to be 10 by... Whoops, not position 10, sorry. 10 by 10. doesn't have to be that tall, but I'm just going to do it. And let's put this at negative 50, whoops, negative 50. So we've got an end cap here. Let's go ahead and put it at like, what, 2.5. And let's go ahead and create a couple more. So we're going to just uh, duplicate this one, except for I'm going to make it 1 by 10 by 50. Slide this into place. Negative 5. Negative 25. There we go. And then duplicate this again. Move it over to the right. 5. There we go. And actually, I'm going to take this top one and we're going to make it a little bit shorter. We're going to make it 50. And the birds are really happy today. All right, cool. And it went perfectly into position. I didn't even hold the snap keys. So if we hit play right now, what you'll see is we have a scene that has... Well, wait. Where am I? Oh, I didn't set this up exactly right, I don't think. Where is the player? Oh, I see. He's... Uh, wait, that's not the player. Where's the player? There's the player. Let's move him way back. So he starts in the darker area. negative 45, hit play, see what we see. Cool, I'm actually going to make these just a little bit more claustrophobic real quick. Let's put this at negative 2 and 2. There we go, nice claustrophobic hallway. So the first thing you'll notice is um, we can see really clearly everywhere right now. And, um, and the second thing you might notice is you might be trying to figure out how to make this dark. And in the process, you might go to the edit menu and try to find render settings and then be, be like, oh, maybe they put it under project settings so it's consistent. And it's not there. Uh, it's not in this menu. It's not in project settings. But they moved all this stuff into a section called lighting. It's a new tab. And this has all the stuff for the global illumination and lighting settings and fog settings. So if you're looking for fog or lighting, this is where it's at now. So we're going to drop the ambient considerably. We're going to drop it to zero. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hit play again so we can see how much difference this makes in what we can see. Now we can still see a little. 
And this is because the default uh, material has a small amount of smoothness to it. So, so there's actually re reflectivity, and the reflectivity kind of shows through on here. Uh, if you want to cut that down even further, we can create a a um, we can create a material. I'm going to call this low ref for low refle reflection. Now we're going to bring the smoothness down to 0.1 and go ahead and put this on each of our cubes. In the future, we won't have to do this. We'll just um, we'll just change the values in the shader, and it will affect all of them. So now if we hit play, you'll see that we have, there we go, we've got a pretty nice dark area. So um, so now we're going to add bloom. So we're going to go to the main camera. Actually, let's just add the tone mapping first. Let's do this. So what we're doing on this episode is playing around with HDR. So let's talk about what HDR actually is first. So high dynamic range means that we have a range of color that exists outside of what the screen can display. And... Um, Normally, you have values between, like, you're, if you're used to working with computers, values between 0 and 255 or 0 and 1.0 for, for the maximum you can have for a color. In Unity, it supports HDR, so these value ranges can actually be greater than, um, than uh, 1.0. Like, you can have values that are 16. You can have values or, that are, if you're doing 255 scale, you could have values that are, like, 6, 672. Um, and those things will just um, be white, like, I mean, they'll just be bright colors, but um, what you can do is you can float what the camera sees versus what the scene brightness is. Uh, this simulates how cameras actually adjust to light. If you've ever seen a camera move from a scene this dark to a scene this light, you'll see that the white balance has to change and all the colors have to change. And the same thing with your eyes. If you if you go to a really bright area, you can't see very well at first, and then you get used to the light. And if you go to a really dark area, you can't see very well at first, and then you get used to the light, and you can see the dark areas better. So so we're going to turn on the HDR on our camera, and we're going to add tone mapping. And I'm also going to add bloom, because bloom is awesome. All right. And what we're going to do is, now, if you change the order of these, tone mapping tries to kind of make itself first. Um, uh, it, at the very least, needs to have HDR from the camera to work. And um, and there's a few different options here. The one that's the most useful, in my opinion, is Adaptive Reinhardt. Adaptive Reinhardt Auto White might do well for you, too, but I'm going to show you why there's a problem with this one. It It's really aggressive on the white balance. So if we, if we hit play right now, and we look down our corridor... If we look in the dark area, it just blows out, and that's not what we'd expect to happen. We'd expect the opposite to happen. So, so the way that you get around this is don't do auto white. Um, this gives you a lot more control over over how things are going to render. So, so here we go. So we've got uh, the setting. I'm going to try and make this room look a little bit darker, though it honestly kind of looks about right for the amount of light that's coming in. But I'm just going to tweak these values a little bit. So. Let's change the white to higher. And let's change the middle gray to lower. Let's do about 0.2. It might be too aggressive. Maybe the default settings are pretty good. All right, so, but what you can already see here is if we walk towards the exit here, you see that we have this incredibly bright white spot here. And as we transition out, it fades in nicely so that we can see the surrounding area. And now this area looks looks slightly darker, but as soon as we look at it again, it brightens up. And so it just automatically transitions based on the amount of uh, light in the scene. And so this creates really nice looking effects, as you can see that you, you probably can already think of some cool ways to do this. This is, uh, this is of course, a really basic example, but this is, this is all you need to get started. Um, and actually, I'm kind of surprised at how good those default settings actually work on the Adaptive Reinhardt. You might want to make it a little bit slower. Like, if you want it to be more realistic, like an eyeball adjusting, um, you could make this adaptive speed considerably slower. And this will make it so that... Um, when you're in darkness, it'll take a lot longer to get used to the darkness. But then when you're in light, it'll also take you a lot longer to get used to the light. So let's see how that actually looks. It's kind of cool. I like it. I'm actually going to... 
go ahead and make it a little bit faster because I also like things to, to just happen not that fast. 0.75 will probably be good for what I want. But yeah, so uh, so this is how you set up a simple tone mapping thing in Unity. And, uh, and yeah, that actually went together faster than I thought it was going to. So I'm pretty happy that we got the results we wanted real quickly here. You don't even necessarily have to be in the room. It kind of bases it based on the total total um, uh, darkness of the scene. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you'll get uh, some weird effects. Um, you'll you, you'll see these effects in games too. If you if you played the first Far Cry, especially there, uh, if you looked at a rock real close, you'd you'd all of a sudden look at have a really bright scene when you turn it around. Which honestly is kind of like real life, but uh, but I mean it's it's one of those things where there's a little bit this off just because it's it's actually sampling from the screen and not uh, and not uh, doing a more complex like bounce calculation how much light is in the in the area etc. But yeah, so uh, so this is uh, this is tone mapping. Actually, let's go ahead and make that middle middle gray a little bit higher so that the outside looks brighter. So will also have the effect of making the inside brighter, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe the settings were good. But yeah, play with your settings. Have fun. I just wanted to show you how to get that set up because a lot of people don't know about that and it's just built into Unity. Um, oh yeah, and uh, if you didn't have that, uh, you may have to import um, effects from the packages here. If you don't have this, um, check the downloads, the additional downloads tab in um, in the Unity 3D website and you'll find the standard assets stuff. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and save the scene. Save, let's we'll call it HDR and put it in this new folder I made. Save. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, you guys have a good one. Um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire. That's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Thank you for joining. And you guys have a great one. And please donate to uh, uh, Cooking with Unity. Uh, Patreon.com slash Cooking with Unity is the best way, place to do it. Uh, we really appreciate your support. And, um... And yeah, if you can't donate, please spread the word about uh, the show. Thank you very much. You guys have a great one. And I will see you tomorrow with more Breakfast with Unity.